I'm sure by now you all might be well versed with elements. The various objects and substances in our surroundings are made from elements. Substances exist in solid, liquid or gaseous state. Some solids are shiny and hard, example gold, silver, etc. Whereas some are soft and brittle, example wood, chalk, etc. A quick glance at the following table will help us to understand this chapter, metals and non-metals, in a better way. You can see from the table that substances like copper, aluminium, silver, etc. have a shiny surface and are hard, whereas coal and sulphur do not shine and can be powdered easily. Elements Elements can be divided into two kinds, metals and non-metals. They differ in properties. So, let us study them. Properties Now we shall learn some physical properties of metals and non-metals. 1. Malleability Malleability is a property of metals. It is the ability of a solid to be formed into a thin sheet on heating. Example, when an iron nail is beaten up with a hammer, it flattens. If we continue to do so, it becomes a thin, flat sheet, whereas coal, when hammered, does not flatten into a sheet. Then what happens? It breaks down to pieces. Observe on the screen and you will realize how useful the property of malleability is. What a blacksmith at work! He places a red-hot piece of iron from a furnace on an anvil and beats it with a hammer. The hot iron is soft. The hammering turns it into a sheet and it can be given any desired shape. Students, I think everybody may not know what an anvil is. So, anvil is a block usually made of iron. It has a flat top, concave sides and often a pointed end on which metals are heated and hammered. Now, let us move on to the next property. 2. Ductility Ductility is the property of metals. It is the ability of a material of being drawn into a wire. Example, platinum, gold, etc. are well-known highly ductile metals. 2.5 kilometers of platinum wire is known to have been drawn from 1.27 grams of platinum. Just imagine. Can coal be beaten into a sheet? No. Can coal be drawn into a wire? No. Exactly. Coal is a non-metal. Non-metals are neither malleable nor ductile. 3. Conduction of heat and electricity. We use metal utensils for cooking food because metals like iron and copper are good conductors of heat. They can carry heat through them. Almost all metals are good conductors of heat and electricity. You all might have observed electrical wiring in your house. It has copper wires. But the switchboard on the wall is made of wood or plastic. It is because copper is a good conductor and wood and plastic are bad conductors of electricity. Thus, substances that allow heat and electricity to flow through them are called conductors of heat and conductors of electricity respectively. Let us move on to the next property. Ringing sound 4. You must have observed the gong of your school bell. What is it made of? Metal. Metals produce a ringing sound, whereas non-metals do not produce a ringing sound. Just have a look. 
we have a bell made of iron metal. It produces a ringing sound with a gong that strikes it. On the other hand, when the charcoal pieces are struck with each other, no ringing sound is produced as charcoal is a non-metal. By now, we have studied the physical properties of metals and non-metals. Now, we shall learn a few chemical properties of metals. Chemical properties of metals Reaction with oxygen When metals react with oxygen, they form oxides. Take a magnesium ribbon and burn it. A bright light is produced. When magnesium burns in air, it combines with oxygen and forms magnesium oxide. 2. Rusting of iron You might have seen iron, when left exposed in moist air for a long time, rusts. That is, a reddish substance is formed on its surface. This is the chemical reaction of iron with the oxygen in the air. Let us try this. Take an iron article that has rusted. Scrape off the rust. Add the rust to water in a test tube. Shake the test tube. Test the water in it with red and blue litmus paper. Observe. We can observe that the red litmus paper turns blue. Thus, we can conclude that oxides of metals are alkaline in nature. Acids as well as bases react with metals. Now, in this part, we shall study the action of acids on metals followed by the action of bases on metals. The action of acids on metals. 1. Take four test tubes and label them A, B, C and D. 2. Place a magnesium ribbon in A, a thin sheet of aluminium in B, iron filing in C, and a copper wire in D. 3. Add 5 milliliters of diluted hydrochloric acid to each of the test tubes. Observe the reactions carefully. If a reaction does not take place, heat the test tube slightly. Now take a burning matchstick near the mouth of each of the test tubes. We can observe that a little popping sound is heard as the matchstick is taken near the test tubes. Do you all know why does this happen? It is because of the release of hydrogen gas in the reaction. As hydrogen is inflammable, that is, easily catches fire, it burns with a pop when a burning matchstick is taken near the mouth of the test tube. Let us have a look at the reactions. Test tube A. Here, magnesium reacts with diluted hydrochloric acid, producing magnesium chloride and hydrogen gas is released. Test tube B. Here, aluminium reacts with dilute hydrochloric acid, producing aluminium chloride and hydrogen gas is released. Test tube C. Iron reacts with diluted hydrochloric acid forming ferrous chloride and liberation of hydrogen gas. Test tube D. Copper does not react with hydrochloric acid at normal or high temperature. It dissolves in hot concentrated sulfuric acid and produces solutions of copper sulfate and sulfur dioxide gas. That was action of acids on metal. Now, action of bases on metals. In a test tube, take 5 to 10 milliliters of sodium hydroxide solution. Drop a thin piece of aluminium in it. Take a burning matchstick near the mouth of the test tube. We can observe that a popping sound is heard. Thus, the gas that burnt was hydrogen. Hence, we can conclude that when bases react with metal, hydrogen gas is released. The next subtopic, which we are going to study now, is very simple and mostly known to you all. 
Have a look. Uses of metals. They are widely used for making cooking utensils. Copper wires are mainly used as conducting wires and in electrical gadgets, radios, refrigerators, etc. Iron and aluminium sheets are used to make roofs of houses. Gold, silver, tin, etc. are used to make coins and ornaments. Mercury is used in thermometers. Compounds of sodium, like sodium chloride, that is common salt, sodium carbonate, that is washing soda, sodium bicarbonate, that is baking soda, etc., are used for various purposes in our day-to-day -day life. Let us move on to the uses of non-metals. Uses of non-metals 1. Graphite is used as the core in pencils. 2. Graphite is used as one electrode in an electrochemical cell. 3. Silicon dioxide, the oxide of the metalloid silicon, is used in making glass and cement. 4. Silicon is used in the solar cell. 5. Red phosphorus is widely used for various purposes such as making safety matches, crackers, germicides, explosives, etc. 6. Sulfur is used for producing acids and also in some medicines, gunpowder, etc. Gunpowder Students, what is gunpowder? Gunpowder is an explosive made of saltpeter, sulfur and charcoal. Now, we shall learn the next subtopic, noble metals. Noble metals. Certain metals are categorized as noble metals. Metals like platinum and gold are found in nature in the form of elements. They are not affected by air, water, acids, heat, etc. Hence, they are called noble metals. They do not ordinarily take part in chemical reactions. Let us see the uses of noble metals. Gold and platinum are mainly used for making ornaments. Gold coins were used in olden times. Gold is used for plating silver. Platinum is used in some medical instruments. Gold, though precious, is used by almost everyone. But you might have heard that one should be very careful while purchasing gold articles as there are chances of being cheated, right? So, let us learn something about purity of gold. The purity of gold. The purity of gold is measured in carats. 24 carat gold is 100% pure. The purity of gold determines its price. However, 24 carat gold is very soft, so ornaments made of 24 carat gold break or get bent easily. Therefore, in order to make it a little hard, copper or silver is added to it in necessary proportion. Ordinarily, 22 carat gold is used for making ornaments. Let us observe the percentage of gold in gold of different purities. 24 karat gold is 100% pure. 22 karat gold is 91.8% pure. 18 karat gold is 75% pure. 14 karat gold is 58.5% pure. 12 karat gold is 50% pure. 10 karat gold is 42% pure. Corrosion Students, you might have heard of things getting corroded. Now, let us see how it actually happens. Example 1. Iron articles slowly get covered with a reddish substance. 2. If copper vessel remains wet, they develop yellowish-green patches. 3. Silver articles turn black. In all the above examples, the gases present in air react with the metals, iron, copper or silver, 
due to moisture to produce compounds of the metals. This action that wears the metals is known as corrosion. In the above example, the following elements react. Oxygen gas reacts with iron and produces a reddish substance. Carbon dioxide gas reacts with copper to produce yellowish-green patches. Hydrogen sulfide gas reacts with silver and produces black sulfides. Prevention of Corrosion To prevent corrosion of metals, a layer of grease or oil is applied to them and they are coated with another metal that does not rust. Iron articles are given a coating of zinc to prevent rusting, that is, they are galvanized. Ships are coated with enamel paints to prevent the corrosion of the metal sheets by the salty sea water. These paints contain metals like zinc or magnesium which prevent contact between the metal surface and the surrounding air. Therefore, chemical reactions cannot take place and corrosion is prevented. Friends, by now we have studied about metals and non-metals. Now, let us learn something new, that is, alloys. Alloys An alloy is a homogeneous mixture of two or more metals or of metals and non-metals. Alloys contain metals in specific proportions. In the alloy, physical properties change, but chemical properties remain the same. Example 1. When copper and tin are mixed in proper proportion, we get an alloy called bronze. In the alloy, copper loses its softness and the alloy becomes hard. 2. The alloy steel is obtained from iron and carbon. It is a stronger material. Iron, nickel and chromium form an alloy called stainless steel. It is more durable clean and does not rust.